Anatomy and Physiology, Reproductive System. The outline of this lecture is as follows. The female reproductive system, the female breast, the male reproductive system. Let's talk about the female reproductive system. Let's talk about the reproductive organs and structures. So the ovary, ovaries right here, that's where, that's where eggs are produced. You have your uterine tubes with the, fem, with the fimbriae, these are also known as fallopian tubes. You have your uterus, which contains the endometrium, which is the inner lining of the uterus, and the myometrium, which is the muscular portion of the uterine wall. You have your cervix and your cervical os, which is also known as a cervical opening. Now, cervix means neck. So if you think about the uterus as the head, then this cervix is the neck. Then you have the vagina right here. This is the vagina. There are a few ligaments around the uterus that you should be aware of. There's the broad ligament, because it's broad, hence the name broad ligament. The, you know, a lot of the blood supply to the, to the uterus runs in here. You have your ovarian ligament, which is a ligament attached to the, to the ovary, hence the name ovarian ligament. You have your mesosalpinx, which is here, Salpinx is the tube, so think about the mesosalpinx as the mesentery for the fallopian tube or the salpinx. Round ligament of the uterus, it's not seen in this picture, but I think in one of my lectures I did mention that the round ligaments of, of the uterus runs in the inguinal canal in women. Then suspensory ligament of the ovary, which is here, and you can kind of see it suspending the ovary, hence the name suspensory ligament of the ovary. When you think about it, the names of these structures do make sense. Let's talk about the external female reproductive anatomy. We have the labia minora and majora. So labia means lips. So you have the labia minora, which are the minor lips or the smaller lips, and the labia majora, which are the larger lips. You have the clitoris, which is right here. And if you look closely enough, you can see the clitoral hood. And the clitoris is analog analogous to the penis in a male, except smaller. You have the, mon the mons pubis, which is the pubic mound. You have the vaginal opening, which is here. And also note the position of the urethra and anus. So the vaginal opening is here. So anterior to that, you see the ure, ure, ureteral, urethral orifice. And then the anus is very posterior. So you got your three openings. You know, the open, ureth, urethral orifice where the urine comes out, vaginal orifice where a baby can come out if the woman's pregnant, and you got the anal orifice, anus, where poop comes out. Let's talk a little bit about female reproductive physiology. We're going to talk about the menstrual cycle, which is on average 28 days, but it can vary by, by a few days. The hormones that are involved are FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary, estrogen, which is made in the ovary, and progesterone, which is also made in the ovary. You can, you can divide the menstrual cycle into four phases. You have the menstrual phase, which is where you have sloughing of the, in, of the endometrium and menstrual bleeding. After that, you have the proliferative phase where the, endo, where the endometrium is trying <coughs> to rebuild itself. Hence, cells have to proliferate in order for that to happen, hence proliferative phase also known as a preovulatory phase. Then mid-cycle, 
around four, around 14 days, you have ovulation. And this is the process in which the ovum, which is the egg, is released into the uterine tube so that if there are so that if there are any available sperm, it can be it can be fertilized and the baby can be produced. If not, it just it just sits there. And at, at ovulation, luteinizing hormone and estrogens peak. FSH also peaks, but it's a smaller peak. And then you have the secretory or post-ovulatory phase, which is where progesterone peaks. And this is where you have gland, gland, glandular development in the endometrium, and glands, glands secrete things, hence secretory phase. And of note, there's also a smaller rise in, estro in estrogen as well. So you have your menstrual phase, preovulatory phase, ovulation and post-ovulatory phase. Ovulation, LH and estrogen peaks. FSH also peaks, but it's smaller. In your post-ovulatory phase, your progesterone goes up because it's secreted by corpus luteum. You also have a smaller rise in estrogen, which is again secreted by the corpus luteum. So I advise that if you need to, pause this video and study, study these diagrams in detail. Let's talk about the female breast. The breast sits up on top of the pectoralis major. So the breast sits on top of the chest wall. External landmarks include the nipple and areola. Here's the nipple, here's the areola. You have your, have your ducts, formerly known as lactiferous ducts, which is where, where if a woman is lactating, milk flows through and and exits through the nipple. You have your lobes and lobules. You also have your suspensory ligaments, which are not shown here, but if they were, they'd probably, they'd kind of run like this. They kind of suspend the breast tissue to provide, provide structural support for the breast. Now let's talk about the male reproductive system. We have the testis or the testicle, which is here. We have the epididymis, which sits on top of the testicle. Epi is on top. Didymis, actually, I have to look up what that means, but just know it sits on top of the testicle. The ductus deferens or vas deferens runs from the epididymis. runs from the epididymis to here, where it enters the, the seminal vesicles, which is here, seminal vesicle. Then you have the prostate, which is here. You have the urethra exiting the bladder. And recall from the The, the kidney lecture that I gave a while ago, the, the urinary system lecture, that there are three portions of the urethra. There's a prostatic urethra, which runs in the prostate. There's a membranous urethra, which runs through the urogenital diaphragm, which is this muscular sling right here. And you have the spongy urethra, which runs through, through the corpus spongiosum of the penis. It's also known as the penile urethra. Oh, and speak of the devil, the urogenital diaphragm. It's right here. It's right here. And then, of course, we have the penis. It consists of one corpus spongiosum, which are here, and two paired corpora cavernosa, which are here. These are, and these are your erectile bodies of the penis. Then of course there's the glands penis, there's the glands of the penis. Then there's the scrotum in which the testicle and epididymis sits. Let's talk about the pathway of sperm in the male reproductive tract. So sperm are made in the seminiferous tubules of the testis. 
The sperm and the, the sperm exit the testis, travel through the epididymis, travels up the vas the vas deferens, joins up with the sem, joins up with secretions from the seminal vesicle, traverses the prostate, travels through the urethra, and then e exits the penis. If the, if the sperm exits the penis into the vagina, then what can occur is conception, which is fertilization of the egg and embryo development. Basically, basically pregnancy. So, so, and this happens in a number of space, steps. The first step is that the egg has to be present in the fallopian tube. So the egg, so the egg leaves the ovary. Then if the egg is present and sperm are present and conditions are favorable, the sperm fertilizes the egg. This fertilized egg then divides until an, until an embryo is formed. And while this is happening, the cells, the, the beginning of the embryo imp, implants in the uterus and continues to grow until pregnancy is completed. The end. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Like this video. Subscribe.